2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Parents, grandparents, friends, teachers, and students, welcome to the celebration of the achievement of Southwest Chicago Christian Schools, Tinley Park Campus, Class of 2020. I am Phil Seamer, principal of the Tinley Park Campus. The verse I read is so fitting for our time. God provides all things at all times to bless us abundantly and to give us all that we need. The year of 2020 will always be remembered as a time of challenge in which we have needed God to sustain each of us, our community, our nation, and our world. To some, 2020 will be remembered by a few words or phrases, remote learning, Zoom, quarantine, face masks, hand washing, shelter in place, home haircuts, and social distancing. But to me, I will remember the attitudes I have seen from the students of the class of 2020. And the word I will remember is perseverance. You have faced more than your fair share of challenge over the past nine years. And to, the, to end your time at the Tinley Park campus during a pandemic is an added disappointment. However, you have inspired me by your positive outlook, which you have man maintained. One aspect of the Southwest Chicago Christian School graduate profile is to be a follower of Christ. You can all say with the Apostle Paul, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. You have persevered. In the classroom and from your homes, you have learned the quadratic formula, Brown versus the Board of Education, the process of drought, Augustine and the Pelagian controversy. You should be proud of what you have done because of the difficulty of the work and because of the circumstances within which you have learned it. Psalm 92 says that wicked people are like grass, which can easily be torn out, dried up, or cut down. But good people are like trees planted in the temple of the Lord. Even when they are old, they will still be sturdy and produce fruit. The experiences of this class and their reliance on God have made them those sturdy trees that will persevere. Thank you to all of you who are joining us in celebrating this distinguished class. Now, Peyton Vendrunen will share the class verse. As our time here at Southwest Chicago Christian is coming to a close, our class discussed different Bible verses that would best represent our time together. We ultimately settled on James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish at work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Throughout the years, we have been on a roller coaster of a ride as we have endured many trials as a class. The ups and downs that we have experienced have brought us closer together as a family and made our relationship stronger. It has taught us that no matter what happens, we always have God in each other by our sides, even as some of us go our separate ways. God has done so many incredible things with every single person in this class and will continue to bless us and watch over us as we move on from Southwest Chicago Christian School. Now Holly Clevering will say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for being our protector, savior, and friend. Thank you for a great eighth grade year and for all the relationships that grew stronger. We are grateful for all the opportunities we had to learn about your world, who you are, and who we are meant to be. Thank you for the ability to play as teammates on our court or field, to share fun moments at tournaments and on long bus rides. Thank we are thankful for the fun we had on the ski trip and field trips with our class. We give thanks for all our teachers, parents, and classmates that helped us grow in our education and walk with Christ. 
We are grateful for the entire school community and parents that came together to teach us in these last few months. You have truly blessed and protected us this year. As we graduate from eighth grade and look forward to the future, we ask you that you continue to guide us and bless our future studies. May we grow in our knowledge and love for you and learn our place in your world. Help us to use that knowledge and love to spread your good news to our neighbors and those around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in welcoming Joy Porter to the stage to address our class. Welcome, teachers, staff, fellow students, and proud parents and guardians. We made it. Woo! Everyone just give a hand clap to yourself, wherever you are, in your bed, in your living room, whatever. Let me start off by saying how honored I am for being given this wonderful opportunity to come before you today and tell you about the class of 2020. Or as a meme I saw the other day put it, the class of 2020, virtually the best class ever. I do want to take the time to thank God. If it wasn't for him and the support of my family, teachers, and friends, I wouldn't be standing before you today. So 2020 was supposed to be the greatest year to graduate, but our class went through a lot of changes. Through every test and trial we went through, I feel we grew from not just an eighth grade class, but to an eighth grade team. And this was a team that was not going to be stopped. There were four keys for us in going from an eighth grade class to an eighth grade team. T-E-A-M. The first thing that transformed us into an eighth grade team were top-notch teachers. I'm talking about top-notch teachers like Mr. G, who used computer programming to help us overcome any problem that might come at us. Mrs. DeVries, who helped us discover our courage and determination within through the diary of Anne Frank and Mrs. Zuderman, who taught us battle strategies from the Cold War to come out victorious. When life threw us a curve and our homeroom teacher had to step away, God sent the perfect fit, Ms. Kreischeld, to strengthen our understanding of what it means to defend our faith. To be an eighth grade team, along with top-notch teachers, we had excellent encouragers. Can I be honest for a minute? Our eighth grade class was probably not the easiest to deal with, but you, our excellent encouragers, have been there for us through our ups and downs. We have all come a long way thanks to you, and we just wanna say thank you all so much. We are grateful for the advice, the knowledge, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but also the homework. One thing I'm really gonna miss the most about this place is the relationships. Do you know how in the movies, the teachers and students just walk by each other without saying a word? I have never once walked by a teacher without them saying hi to me and seeing how my day was going. They didn't just see us as students. They treated us as if we were parts of their families. Along with the teachers, my classmates were also excellent encouragers because at the end of the day, we understood we were family. We would bicker with each other while playing monkey on the wood chips, six square, infection tag, or whatever we would come up with. But no matter how much we fought and fussed, we always found our way back to each other. Even though the coronavirus changed things up for us, we remained connected and committed to one another. We grew into an eighth grade team because of top-notch teachers, excellent encouragers, and A-plus players. In all the years that SCCS has been here, I'm sure there have been some pretty great eighth grade classes, but I'm not sure there's ever been a group of A-plus players like us that have been assembled. The 2020 graduating class of SCCS was an eighth grade team with A-plus players that consisted of music lovers like May and Eva, who can help you find some fantastic songs to listen to. We had A-plus players in gaming too, like David, Matthew, Austin H, RJ, and Jacob, who have the fastest speed in nitro type or the best way to fix a problem on your computer. Our team had A plus racers like Noah and Wes. Trust me, you do not want to race with them if you want to retain your dignity. We also had A plus artists like Holly, Kayla, Kylie, and Trinity, whose creativity was incredible. With their effort, we had some A-plus players on the boys' basketball team. Chad, Austin C., Tommy, Connor, 
Austin H. and Jeremiah, you guys know what it means to never give up. In the midst of your challenges, you made some fantastic memories together as a team. Trinity, Morgan, and Kayla brought the A-plus energy and excitement as cheerleaders for our school. And last but not least, My Lady Knights, who were straight up A-plus people. Courtney, Josiah, Madison, Peyton, and Holly, we had an amazing season together as a team. I'll always remember when we beat the previously undefeated Crown Point. It is a memory of us that I will cherish because we are finally able to have a victory over them. All of us have grown as a team because of T, top-notch teachers, E, excellent encouragers, A, A-plus players, and M, magnificent memories. Throughout the years, remember all of the magnificent memories we have formed together, like singing with Miss Van and with Miss DeYoung. The laughter, the joy, the inside jokes, and the loyalty we have shared together will never be forgotten. Like running to the back of the bus to get the bumpiest seat, and just spending hours on it laughing together. And we can't forget our ski trip. We all started off not being able to stand on our own two feet, but in an hour or two, we were all doing pretty well. Well, except for what happened to me, but we don't need to relive that. Having all of you guys, my classmates and my teammates with me, school was never boring. I hope you will never forget the unbreakable bonds we formed through sports and just hanging out together. No matter which way life takes us, we will always have these magnificent memories. Because of our top-notch teachers, excellent encouragers, A-plus players, and magnificent memories, we have grown into a great team. In the words of Kobe Bryant, the most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. And this is what we hope to accomplish as we leave here today. In closing to the 2020 graduating class of SCCS, let's go be great. Before we go out, team, let's bring it in one last time. Knights on three! One, two, three, Knights! Nice. Katie Jager is a lot to me. She was my cheer coach, my ride to school every day, and my mentor for my whole life. She has been there for me and for the people around her. She is very much a Christian and a strong one too. She can make you laugh, smile, and cheer you up whenever. She's very caring and dedicated to anything you put in front of her. She's a child of God, an educator, a boss of a company, and my mom. Thanks for everyone who wanted her to speak. And with that, would you please help me in welcoming her to the stage? Thank you, Kayla. I so badly wish that I could see each of you sitting here before me. We all are feeling some depth of emotion knowing that we can't all be here together tonight. But don't think for one second that you don't deserve a celebration that is fabulous. And hats off to Southwest Christian School everyone who was involved in making the planning and being creative in this option, plan B celebration for you eighth graders. What an incredible class you have. One class for since the first day of kindergarten, now to the finish line of eighth grade. I remember having a conversation with your fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Coen Ms. Coenga, at the time of her retirement. Her opinion was asked, do you split the classroom or do you keep them as one? Her response is one I'll never forget. They are a family. They may have disagreements, but they love each other deeply. When it comes, to, when it comes down to it, they always have each other's backs and stand up for those who need it. Splitting them up would do more harm than good for this family unit. And lo and behold, here you are, one big family. Throughout the years, you gained students and you warmly welcomed them into the classroom and some of you became fast friends. I remember last year, one of your fellow students transitioned out unexpectedly. This rocked your classroom. I remember Kayla telling me how many tissue boxes you went through because you were feeling the sadness of saying goodbye to a friend that was always there. 
This to me demonstrates how remarkable of a class you have. Coming together and experiencing the highs and the lows just as a family would. When addressing your class today, I have chosen to surround my thoughts around the power of having a positive perspective in life. Having the power of perspective will change the way you look at anything, anyone, or any situation you will come across. Putting this into action will make all the difference in the world. You are familiar with a common phrase that goes something like this. Some of us look at the glass half full, while others look at the glass half empty. But what if we simplified it and we were just thankful that we had a glass to fill? When you have an attitude of gratitude, it is a total game changer in life. I wish to talk about a few examples you will need to exercise the power of having po positive perspective as you venture into adulthood. The following examples will surround the various relationships that you already have and those yet to come. So let's start with your parents. There will be times where you don't see eye to eye and this is completely normal and expected. It is a growing season for both of you. However, when these situations arise, remember to keep these following things in mind. They love you more than anything else in the world. They make sacrifices to fulfill your needs, and they want nothing more than to see you succeed. Most importantly, your parents are in constant prayer for you, for your safety, for your well-being, and most importantly, to continue to develop a strong walk with God. We want the best for you as parents, even when you can't see it. So consider to try and look at their point of view and remind yourself of these great qualities within your parents. Show them respect, hear them out, talk to them, thank them, and say I love you often. Moving to your teachers. Your teachers choose to wake up every morning prepared to bring you the best knowledge and resources possible to see you succeed. Much like your parents, they pray over you, they care deeply for your well-being, and they strive to encourage your relationship with God. Look at them as mentors, listen to their direction, show respect, express ap appreciation, and don't be afraid to ask them for help. After all, their sole purpose is there to be for you. Friendships. Friends will come and go, and some will be for life. Choose your friends wisely and who you surround yourself with. Learn to pay attention to their words and their actions, and ask yourself often, are they honest? Do they show kindness to their parents, to their teachers, to your fellow peers? Do they look at situations with a positive perspective or are always expressing negativity? Do they make you laugh and create fun memories? Do they encourage you in all aspects of life, including your relationship with Jesus? Who you become friends with is your choice. There will be times where you find yourself in unforeseen situations where drama may arise, feelings may get hurt, and you end up realizing that maybe these aren't your true friends after all. This is all part of life's journey. But how you handle it will make all the difference. Life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. Restrain from jumping to conclusions, reacting with impulsive decisions, take a breath and think carefully on how to respond to the situation at hand. Sometimes it helps to give those situations perspective by asking yourself, will this really matter in a year? Will it really matter in five years? Most things aren't as bad as you think they are. Relationships, yep, we're gonna go there, boyfriends and girlfriends. Take the above attributes you want in a friend and apply them to these relationships as well. Before you get involved, set Christian boundaries for yourself avoid temptations, and don't settle for anything less than you deserve. There is plenty of time to date, 
So don't rush into it. To wrap up the friendship and relationship segment, I want to challenge you on one more thing. This will sound old school, but I'm okay with that. Technology is a great resource. Socializing on your phones, texting, social media, etc. It's the way of life. But do yourself a favor. Instead of doing FaceTime through a, a phone, do real FaceTime. Learn to have a conversation face-to-face. -face. Keep eye contact while speaking with someone and genuinely show interest in who they are. This type of FaceTime will build meaningful and fulfilling relationships. Finally, I want to talk about you. As life goes on, you will learn more and more about yourself, and you will see yourself change and transform along the way. You are going to be your own adventure. Love yourself first. This is not implying that you are to be selfish, full of yourself, or greedy. Loving yourself is understanding your self-worth, value, accepting who you are, setting those Christian boundaries, deciphering what you stand for, choosing for yourself what is right and wrong, and believing that you are wildly capable of doing anything that you set your mind to. Please don't compare yourself to others. As we well know, comparison is a thief of joy. God created you to be you, and he has amazing purpose for your life. Be fearless in his purpose, finding his purpose and plan for you. Don't beat yourself up over mistakes. Mistakes make us human. Mistakes are made to help us learn and grow, and not for repeating. But make no mistake that our God is a loving and forgiving God, and he made the ultimate sacrifice to save us from those mistakes. Growing your love for Jesus is the most important relationship in the world. Praise him daily. Thank him for your countless blessings and live your love for him out loud and proud, unashamed of who he is and what he has done for your life. There is nothing more beautiful than a Christian radiating God's love, no matter who they are with or where they are at. Always be a walking testimony. You just never know who's watching in the world around you. Be a light for Jesus and shine bright. When disappointment, anger, and sadness comes your way, open your Bible. Read his word, pray. I promise no matter what passage you turn to, there is comfort ready for you there. Even when you don't feel like it, turn to God. Blast your favorite worship music, sing your heart out, all you want. Whatever method you choose, it is 100% effective in uplifting your spirits and providing the immediate relief that you need. There's always something good, even on a bad day. Find the good and see the good. When you can't see the sunshine, be the sunshine. The power is in the positive perspective. After all, you can't climb uphill when you have downhill thoughts. So just be kind. Everyone you meet deserves a smile. A smile or a compliment will go a long way for someone. You just never know what someone is facing, and an act of kindness can make it all the difference to them. Send someone a handwritten note or card, a card of thanks, a card of encouragement, a card of I'm thinking for you, or a card of recognition for a job well done. Include a fitting Bible verse or two. Gestures as simple as this will be treasured forever. It's up to you to start a chain reaction of love and kindness for one another and always remember to pay it forward. Now, there could never be a time more fitting for what I'm about to say next. Life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer it gets to the end, the faster it goes. Time is precious. Be intentional about making time and creating space for Jesus, yourself, family, and your friends. Enjoy these next chapters of your life. Try new things and take chances. Get involved in as much as you can. Be diligent in your studies. Be different, and it's okay to stand out. Become a leader, not a follower. Have fun, laugh a lot, make a ton of memories and continue to love our God with all your heart. So to the family of 2020, 
congratulations. We couldn't be prouder of each and every one of you. I encourage you not to fly, but to soar in the future to come. I look forward to seeing what's next in your lives and where those wings of yours take you. Thank you. I am Matthew Scanlon. Each year, the faculty and staff nominate certain eighth grade students with awards. Now, some teachers will describe the awards and announce who receives each one. First, I will announce the top five students. Valedictorian Joy Porter. Co-salutatorians Holly Clevering, Matthew Scanlon, and Peyton Vendrunen. Also included in the top five is Weston Wiedenar. We really appreciate your hard work over these past few years. Uh, it is a, a testament to your diligence and your intelligence. Great job, and we can't wait to hear what you are going to do for God and his kingdom with your talents. I will also announce the two athletes of the year. This award is determined with input from teachers and coaches. The athletes of the year excel in sports using talent and athleticism, exhibit good sportsmanship both on and off the playing field, are team leaders and motivators, and give all they can in both practices and games. 2020 Athletes of the Year have been involved in multiple sports each year of middle school, and they are fierce competitors. They are Connor Shaftsma and Peyton Vendrunen. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Each year, eighth grade music students are nominated uh, to receive the Outstanding Musicianship Award, chosen by the choir and band directors. There are plaques at each campus displaying each year's recipients, and the students themselves receive a separate plaque commemorating their achievement in our music programs. The criteria for this award include great skills on their instrument or voice, leadership qualities, both as examples as well as mentoring others, positive attitudes, wonderful rehearsal and performance etiquette, above and beyond performance efforts, longevity, meaning that the individual has plans to continue music throughout high school and beyond, and a continued growth in music for their time at SCCS. This year's recipient is tenacious in his musical preparation. He has participated well beyond his classroom ensemble expectations by continuing with private lessons, participating in the IGSMA solo and ensemble contest annually, playing at his own church, and performing with the high school ensembles for various events. He has performed music to the best of his abilities and at a level consistent with high school students. He has honed his craft for more hours than most of his peers, well beyond the band curriculum requirement. This year's recipient of the Outstanding Musicianship Award goes to Matthew Scanlon. This year I have been asked to announce the Veterans of Foreign Wars Award. This award is given to someone or two students who excel in citizenship, scholarship, and attendance. The scripture that this is based upon, this award is based upon, is Philippians 4 verse 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This award is given to two students who have excelled in citizenship by putting into practice what he or she has learned. This also involves a person who strives to achieve all that they can in and out of the classroom, and also a person who strives to be present at school whenever possible. The award for this year is given to two students, Matthew Scanlon and Thomas Voss. Today I'm honored to present the Kiwanis Improvement Award to two of our students, 
This award is given to students who show improvement in academic attitude and behavior. The scripture verse that this is based on is Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The Kiwanis Award uh, is given to students who made an effort to become better in academics over the year, to students who made an effort to improve his or her attitude over the year, and to students who made an effort to improve their behavior over the year. The recipients of this award are Courtney Staub and Jeremiah Oliver. Throughout this year, Courtney has not only uh, tried to improve in her studies, but she continually showed kindness and respect to both her fellow students and teachers. Jeremiah is dedicated to his studies, always trying to do his best, and one of the best things Jeremiah does is he asks questions until he totally understands what he needs to know. So congratulations, Jeremiah and Courtney. I will be presenting the Daniel Grafune Memorial Award. Daniel Grafune was a student at the Oakland campus who, because of some heart condition, passed away during his eighth grade year, and we wanted to make sure that his memory lived on and the things that he did in his life uh, that impacted our school. The Bible verse is honoring the student who best demonstrates the model by which Daniel lived. I do, I'll do the best I can. The Daniel Grafune Memorial Award characteristics are a person who accepts others and is not so hung up on appearance or cliques, a person who strives to make the most of what he or she academically and physically can do, a person who demonstrates a love for younger children, a person who never gives up, saying, I'll do the best I can, and a person who demonstrates excellent sportsmanship and strives to live his Christian commitment. I am honored to give this award to Kylie Vanderveer. Kylie, thank you for always trying your best and living out your Christian commitment at Southwest Christian School. This next award is in honor of Wendy Rune, a long-term ASC teacher at Southwest who lost her battle with cancer. The Wendy Rune Award is given to a student who is living their life for Christ and for others. The scripture passage for this award is the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23. The Wendy Rune Award is given to a person who demonstrates godly humility in attitude, speech, and actions who shows selflessness in relationships, considers first the needs of others, and puts these ahead of own interests, who lives with a joy and a sense of humor in all circumstances, who has a strong work ethic and demonstrates respect and equal treatment of others. The student receiving this award came to every class with a smile on her face and was always ready to work hard and put her best effort into whatever task she was given. Her Christ-like attitude was displayed by a heart that was always ready to help, encourage, and serve others. I am honored to present this year's Wendy Rune Award to Josiah Morris. I have the honor of presenting the Barnabas Award. Uh, the Barnabas Award is given to someone who seeks out and encourages others. The Bible passage that the Barnabas Award is based on is from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. The Barnabas Award winner is someone who uses encouragement to help others, a person who edifies and builds up others, 
a person who recognizes positive qualities in their peers and focuses attention on those qualities. This is also a person who takes risks in order to help others. This year, the Barnabas Award goes to May Maloney. May, your classmates and your teachers have appreciated your quiet, humble attitude that seeks to encourage and lift up others rather than draw attention to yourself. May God continue to use your willing spirit to build up those around you. Congratulations, May. Our next award is the Timothy Award. This award is based on 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for them in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. The Timothy Award recipient is a person who sets a Christ-like example of living, a person who stands up for Christ-like attitudes, speech, and behavior, a person who demonstrates good leadership skills, and a person who uses youthful energies to influence others. This year, the Timothy Award goes to Joy Porter. Joy has been a consistent leader socially, academically, and athletically. Joy works hard, pushes herself to become better, and she isn't afraid to stand up for what's right. Congratulations, Joy. The Christian Citizenship Award is described as serving Christ by serving others. The scripture reference comes from 1 Peter 4, verse 11, which says, if anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. The Christian Citizenship Award embodies a person who recognizes the needs of others around them. It's a person who has an attitude of a servant heart towards others. It is a person who responds with kindness to the needs of others. This award has been given to Kayla Jagger and Noah Luke. Noah is a quiet servant. Many times Noah has been seen serving others within the classroom and selflessly serving others, trying not to get noticed, just because it was the right thing to do. At a service trip at Camp Manitoba, I remember how he worked so hard and did it so quietly and just loved doing it because he loved serving. Kayla Jager is one of the kindest students I've worked with. She has a calming, comforting, encouraging demeanor, and she looks out for others when they need it most. I remember Kayla showing this kindness and care to many of her classmates and always looking for ways to help them feel loved, included, and safe. Congratulations, Noah and Kayla. Joining me on stage is Mr. Jeff Wiedenar, president of the board of Southwest Chicago Christian Schools to introduce the class of 2020. Please join me in celebrating their achievements as they receive their diplomas. Raymond John Ardema. Eva Joy Bultice. <laughs> Chad Mitchell Busker, Jr. Austin Peter Kavanaugh. Yeah, 
Holly Elizabeth Clevering. Trinity Renee Falls. Austin Michael Heisinger. Kayla Marie Jagger. <laughs> Jacob Allen Kropanicki. Noah Edward Luke. <laughs> May Elizabeth Jean Maloney. Josiah Renee Morris. <laughs> Jeremiah Christian Oliver. Joy Serenity Porter. Morgan Pate. David A. Reisner. <laughs> Matthew G. Scanlon. Connor Frederick Schaffsma. <laughs> Nathan, 
Madison Page Smith. Courtney Staub. <laughs> Kylie Faith Vanderveer. Peyton Martha Vendrunen. <laughs> Thomas John Voss. Weston Dale Wiedenar. Now, on behalf of the Board of Southwest Chicago Christian Schools, I would like to present to you the class of 2020. <laughs> Southwest Superintendent Henry Dorn will conclude our ceremony in prayer. Thank you for joining us tonight for this virtual eighth grade celebration to honor these young people for their accomplishments. As we started this school year last August, none of us could have imagined what has transpired, especially these last few months. We share the disappointment that I'm sure many of our graduates and their family members feel about not being able to gather in person. To be able to share this milestone in these students' academic journeys with family and with friends, we're sad about that. However, as Christ followers, we know that God is in control and is at work in all things for our good. That trust gives us hope, a hope that will not fade away. So graduates, see this only as a temporary bump in the road in the life that God has called you to and is leading you through. Please join me in a closing prayer. Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we gather tonight to celebrate the work these young people have done over the last nine years of their academic life. We also celebrate the work you have done in each of their lives. We thank you for their families who have walked alongside of them and encouraged them. We thank you for faculty members and staff who have taught and nurtured and mentored these young people. We thank you for being a covenantal God who promises to love us and our children. We pray that during their time here at Southwest that they have not only grown academically, but they have grown to love you more and to be closer to you. We pray that these graduates will be followers of Christ who are guided by faith, that they will be seekers of knowledge, and that they will be pursuers of justice in a world with so much inequity and inequality. We commit these young people to your care and to your leading, O oh God, as they move on to high school. You have promised to be faithful from generation to generation as we rest in that promise. Guide these young people in every step of their journey 
and make your way for them clear, so they will follow where you lead. And to you graduates, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement and hope give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the one true God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for this celebration tonight. <laughs>